This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on transform plate boundaries. This video is part of the Seismology and Earthquakes playlist and also the Plate Tectonics playlist. So we're going to look at what a transform plate boundary is, what a fracture zone is and a fault line is, and look at this plate boundary and discuss its characteristics. As a quick overview of what's in the video, we're looking at what kind of plate boundary this is. We're going to look at the anatomy and rock profile of this transform plate boundary and discuss what a fault line is in relation to this boundary and discuss what happens, which is relative motion and the type of fault line, which is a strike slip. And then finally look at what a fracture zone is compared to a transform fault. A transform plate boundary is one of the plate boundaries. And a plate, just a quick recap, would be the crust and the lithosphere, which is part of the upper mantle, if you also include the asthenosphere. And we have to include that because the asthenosphere is the generation or production of our convection currents, which create the movement and relative drift and energy that is placed into the rocks or the crustal rocks, which causes deformation. And in this case, we have brittle deformation with the top few kilometers of the crust and lithosphere based on the temperature and the amount of stress added and the composition of the rocks. And they're not ductile or elastic based on the temperature. And a boundary is where two plates could be oceanic with more basaltic composition or continental with more granitic or andesitic composition where these two plates are going to meet. Now, this creates what this is one of the three types we have divergent and convergent and the last one is our transform these two arrows as indicating the direction of stress and movement so we can also apply this into our diagram our, our rock profile so we have a difference in direction of the stress that's applied in this case we can have plate a and we can have plate b and they are moving in kind of opposite directions in this situation we can also have a situation where these plates are moving in or relative movement in the same kind of direction like this but there are different velocities thus creating this type of opposing stress creating this transform plate boundary now how do we link this up to divergent and convergent well divergence where the plates are made or constructed and after they're made in, at the ridge or the mid-ocean ridge areas or spreading centers these plates will then move over the earth's surface on the way to a convergent plate boundary or destructive plate boundary where they are subducted based on density and isostasy but on the way to that convergent plate boundary they will slide past another plate which forms our transform plate boundary. So you get transform plate boundaries at divergent and convergent plate boundaries. In between those boundaries, you get the transform, you get the sliding past of each other. So in terms of the anatomy of a transform plate boundary or a transform fault or transform fault line is you have your rock A and rock B. This is a profile diagram, simply using blocks to represent the crust and try and isolate a certain area around this boundary. So the boundary is right here where these two plates are meeting. And you have what's called relative motion. So you have these opposing stresses causing the rocks to move in different directions. And when they move against each other, you get, well, when they move, they, you get this break. You get the shearing stress. So stress that's moving the rock on this way and this way. And then in between, it's going to fracture, which means to break under the brittle conditions. And it reaches the limit of the capacity of how much the rock can handle before it breaks. And it's going to break and create a fracture. And in this case, it's going to create a nice vertical fault plane right here. Vertical fault plane. Don't forget a fault plane or planar is a flat surface. Now this differs to a different type of fault. We discussed dip slip, which would have an angled fault line at a certain inclination. Whereas this one, as you can see, has a vertical fault plane 
and you cannot differentiate in terms of hanging wall or foot wall in which one moves, but the fault line is vertical. Now, if it's not exactly vertical and slightly diagonal, but still has horizontal displacement, we call this a wrench fault. Now, horizontal displacement is this movement right here. It's horizontal and the fault line is perpendicular to the fault line of the horizontal movement. So displacement is a certain distance that each rock block will be displaced. And this is also called offset. We can see how far these plates are moving and how fast they're moving based on displacement and the distortion of the surface where you see the rocks moving. And horizontal being that's the stress vector as well. So this is called a strike slip fault line with a vertical fault plane. And you have two rocks displaying relative motion. Now relative means that there is movement compared to the other block. So if I was standing on this block right here, block A, then I'm moving against this rock over here, rock B. And if I'm looking towards rock B over this vertical fault line right here, the boundary between these two plates, I'm going to see that this is moving in this direction. So it's moving to the right. So from my perspective on rock A, it's moving to the right. And if I go over here and switch sides, I can jump over this fault line and be on rock B, that it's still moving this direction to the right. So whatever way I'm facing, there is relative motion, there is right motion of that plate. Now, strike slips occur along a transform fault, as discussed. They can come in two types. There's right lateral, and there is left lateral, and it's based on the relative motion of the plates. Now, these could be very slow, and they could creep and be more consistent, or they could only move in short periods of time over great distance, and that can also lead to large displacement. Now, the right lateral is called dextral, and this would be, mean that it goes from uh, 90 to 180 degrees. Left is sinistral, and this goes from 0 to 90. Now, what do I mean by that? So if this person is looking, here's my 0 degrees, and then I go around and this is my 90 degrees. Anything going um, to the left would be a left and sinistral strike slip. And because it's going to the right, it's going from 90, going right, 90, back down to 180, back over here. So there is movement either side. So it's right or left. And the amount of distance it's moved is called the offset. So you can calculate the offset and how often this occurs, and also how fast based on distance over time. A fracture, again, is a break in the rock. And this is caused by the stress and the fact that the upper levels of the crust and lithosphere are basically brittle. And any kind of stress is going to cause fractures. And these fractures can occur in many places. They can occur around a fault line. They can occur adjacent to a fault line. They can occur at a spreading center or mid-ocean ridge. It can occur at a rifting center on a continent like the East African Rift uh, Zone or Rift System. It can occur also around a convergent or a divergent plate boundary. So they can occur anywhere because the crust is very, very brittle. The deeper you go in the Earth's interior, you get uh, higher temperatures and you get more of a ductile or elastic deformation compared to a brittle deformation which is a short limit and it just breaks so what you get is you get this fault line where you have the active relative motion left or right but you also have these other areas of fractures within the crust either could be perpendicular to the fault line or it could be uh, parallel to the fault line but you get these these cracks and, and fractures and breaks all along the crust because the convection currents are moving at different speeds and the amount of stress can vary, which means the amount of brittle deformation can also vary, thus leading to the crust moving and breaking under stress at different speeds and, and distances and based on composition of the crust as well and the thickness of the crust, which then looks at density 
and the age of the crust. You can have all these varying factors which cause the rock to be basically not uniform and react differently under stress, which means that as it's moving, it's going to break in different areas, different amounts of, of size of, of blocks and, and sections. So these sections and zones of fractures can occur all along both the oceanic uh, plates and also the coronal plates. Now it's more common in the oceanic plates because you have more of the divergent plate boundaries and that's going to create naturally these large fracture zones that run perpendicular to the divergent plate boundary or the mid-ocean ridges and you get a nice collection of fracture zones on the ocean floor. So a fracture zone also can be an area of inactive fault lines. So it could be an ancient fault line or an old fault line, which can also be a fracture zone. The main fact is the fracture zone doesn't have any movement either side. There's no relative motion around this fracture or break or joint in the rock. Whereas the fault line, the transform fault line, has active movement caused by convection currents and the plate tectonic system. It has active movement around it, thus creating the increase in stress and the potential for earthquakes. Now there are earthquakes all along the different boundaries and margins, but earthquakes are kind of the main feature for these transformed plate boundaries. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.